All right, so we are live. So welcome, welcome, welcome um, to the Love Lessons, How to Heal After the Unthinkable Masterclass. I am so excited uh, because uh, we get to share this information and this time it is recorded. <laughs> so the last time uh, we did a workshop in uh, we did not have the opportunity to record it. So here we go. Um, let's formally welcome you as you come on, whether you're listening to the replay or you're on right now, please let us know that you are here. So please type in the chat that you are here. We want to officially welcome you. Um, then we will say um, a quick prayer. Also, um, share, 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 share if you care is what I like to say. Share if you care. And uh, we will say a quick prayer and then we're going to go ahead and get into it. Um, so please type in the chat. I'm here um, because I like to, to know that you were actually engaged because sometimes we see people like I'll see that it has um, I know on YouTube there's like over 2,000 views um, people didn't say anything I am not doing this um, just so that I can hear myself talk who says I am here I am here I am here somebody says I am here I wonder if it's my hubby I don't know um, so the way that StreamYard works is um, you have to to go on and get get yourself set up so some some people Siobhan how does uh, StreamYard work out where you said, uh... so for StreamYard to work, what you'll have to do, there's a link um, and I will put it in there. Hey, Mary. And what you'll have to do, is you have to give StreamYard access to Facebook. That's Mary. Yep. Okay, great. And once you give Facebook access to um, <laughs> StreamYard access to Facebook, then your name it's will show up and we can see you. Okay. And so um, in just a moment, I'm going to put the link up for you. Let me find the link for StreamYard. And we'll, we'll get you, you click on it one time, it'll bring you out quickly back in, and then you'll be able to um, to communicate with us, all right? Thank you, Siobhan, because I totally couldn't remember. Um, so yes, I am seeing who is here, so I get so excited when I see you. You know I love you, I appreciate you, so I do want to see who is here. So Auntie is here, I am like, wow, because I don't think she's been to any of the, the master classes. And then, of course, Joy to the World, uh, BFF is here, and oh, this is... Um, Joyce Page is here. So this is wonderful. So definitely, if you know some people that have been through some things, definitely share this because if you know me and you know Siobhan, we always give as much information as we can um, when it comes to helping you to, to grow and develop. So um, that being said, um, before we get into um, what more in you, what we do and all of that good stuff. Let's say a quick prayer and then we'll get into uh, what we do uh, with more in you and we'll get into what we're going to talk about today. I hope that you are able to stay um, for questions and things like that. But as you can see, it is recorded. Um, but I, you know, my desire and Siobhan, she pours, let me tell you. Um, as if you've got a question, she's going to get you all the way right. So our desire is for you to definitely stay um, so that you can ask questions and things like that at the end. But what I will tell you is that if for some reason you weren't able to stay and then you're like, I still have a question. I got the workbook. I'm not really sure what to do. We are willing to do a workshop. Um, the workshop is not um, on the books yet. Oh, Michaela's here. It's not on the the um, the books yet. She came to the last one um, where we had like a small group and we decided to do an encore of this and um, have it recorded and we added some stuff. So, you know, I like to, to share information. So let's pray. So Father, in the name of Jesus, God, thank you. Thank you for always showing up right when we need you. Thank you, Lord, for being so close to the brokenhearted. Thank you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit that you've given us to lead us and to guide us into all truth. God, I thank you, Lord, for having this opportunity to be able to, uh, to connect with other believers, to be able to support the body of Christ, to be able to encourage the body of Christ so that we can go from glory to glory, God. God, I am so grateful for who you are. I am so grateful for what you're doing in 
all of our lives. Even the fact that we were willing to come and to learn, that shows something, God, and I'm grateful for it. But I'm asking you to lead us and to guide us. So as we are sharing this information, I'm asking you to lead us and guide us in how we share, what we share, when we share. God, everything that we say, we want it to be spirit led because we are purpose driven. God, you have given us everything that we have, all the gifts that we have. They're all from you. God, you're the one that taught us how to teach other people. So I am praying right now in the name of Jesus that you intervene. And even I speak against the spirit of fear, even people that are like, I don't even know if I want to type a question because I don't know if it's going to sound stupid. I speak against that right now in the name of Jesus. I decree and I declare that those people that have something on their heart that they will share that they will share and they will not be afraid that we are going to break the curse. So whatever they've been through, whatever they've been through today is a new day. So they will be free in Jesus name. Amen. All right. So um, that means now that I have said it, then that means that it is so. So if you have questions, you make sure that you type them questions in the chat. Um, do not be afraid of anybody thinking that it's stupid. I don't know where that was coming from, but it was somebody was thinking about it. I got an amen, so that was good enough for me. Um, but somebody was thinking it um, because I usually pick up in the spirit, whatever it is um, that's going on. So yes, we're over that right now in Jesus name. So more you coaching. If you didn't know, we are a faith-based life coaching and training organization. So we offer faith-based coaching, mentoring, counseling. Also is not listed, but support groups. All we're doing is we're helping believers so that they can develop the confidence to pursue their purpose. Our purpose is to provide resources to you. So that's why you have the, the books that are available, the workbooks, um, and then the practical support. That's why you have the classes. That's why you have the coaching programs and things like that, because that's what we are um, doing is we're helping you to grow. Um, and then our vision, what's our vision is to help people to get be healed from trauma, to help people develop God-centered confidence. Say it again. Say it with my chest. God-centered confidence. Um, we want you to be focused on God more than yourselves. So it's not you doing the thing, but it's God doing it in and through you. So that's what you're going to hear. That's what more in you means. There's more in you because God is in you so that you can actually live this purpose-driven life. And I love that you typed it in the chat. God-centered confidence. Get over yourself. Who needed to hear that? <laughs> um, all right. So our team, this is not everybody. Um, I definitely need to update this. But Minister Charles, um, he's the deliverance minister on the team. Um, you'll see a lot of people in the Facebook group. People have been added. I'm so excited. I don't want to name drop because I feel like that's when you get in trouble. Didn't nobody say my name. So I'm not going to name drop. But I will say we have got some deliverance ministers in the Facebook group now. So I'm really excited about that. Um, so if you do have like questions about um, deliverance, then um, Minister Charles is where you will go. I guess um, I need to change that soon because that's going to be Pastor Charles soon. Um, but yeah, Pastor Charles, um, he um, handles the deliverance uh, sessions that for people that want um, to have those deliverance sessions. My mentor mentor is Minister Ella Coleman. Um, and then you see Siobhan there listed. Um, Latoya, I've got to reach back out to her, um, but she's a business consultant and a mental health um, counselor. And to Sheena, um, yeah, I got to add some people because Maria's not on here. There's a lot of people that's not on. I got to put Maria on there because um, she's doing a master class with me this year. And to Sheena's doing the one reclaiming your identity um, next month. So these are some of the people that you will see um, working um, together when we, if I refer to you, you to somebody, it's either somebody that I know um, personally, or it's somebody that's from our official leadership team. So that's why I don't let just anybody um, post in the Facebook group, because I want to make sure that you are protected because there's a lot of false prophets out here. 
and I get a witness. Um, so why are you here? So this particular um, slide, I'm going to um, actually, I'm going to pass it over to Siobhan soon. Um, but why are you here? You can um, type it in the chat if you want to, or you could just listen for a little while. Um, but here, what I am about personally is I am about pulling it up from the root because I have been a counselor after counselor after counselor. And I felt like the same stuff would just happen again um, later in life, or I would pick up a new thing um, from the old thing. And it was just this toxic cycle. So as a result, um, the fruit in my life, um, I would struggle in relationships. Um, I would struggle even with uh, with health, um, not necessarily as far as being in a doctor, but if you have, if you are overweight, like you as me, okay, um, then <laughs> some people say it's not, it's not a big deal, um, but it is um, because we are, uh, our body is a temple, so we are called um, to to really have um, the fruit of the spirit or self-control and all that kind of stuff. So I'm all about pulling it up from the root. So if there was some trauma in the root that was rooted, um, then we got to pull that up from the root because there's so much that uh, was attached to that trauma. Now, purpose, we don't want to pull that purpose up from the root. If your purpose was rooted in God, then we don't want to pull that up from the root. We want that to stay and that to, to continue to develop. But all of those negative emotions, all of those stories that you keep uh, telling over and over again, um, for example, I could have been like, oh, my husband left me and all that. If I hadn't let that go, then look, my husband now is amazing. So he wouldn't have wanted to hear that story. <laughs> so um, yes, your purpose must be rooted in God. Amen, amen. So I'm going to pass it over to um, Shavana talk about um, restoration. Hey, guys. So huh, we see these roots. And like um, Deidre was talking about, there's some things that you want to keep grounded. But in order to get to the next step, which is restoration, you got to be able to distinguish. And that's what we're going to help you do today. When we get to restoration, <laughs> you'll see the type of things um, such as reconciliation. OK, um, some of these fears that you have had. And I want you to know the biggest thing that I really want you to know about trauma is that you don't have to stay in it. And that restoration is possible. A lot of times we hear and a lot of people talk about, OK, getting down to the root. We absolutely want to pull it up. But remember that when we cut things off at the root, think of a real tree. When you get down there and you destroy the root, when we're talking about these negative ones, it won't come back up. OK, but you have to build on top of it. And what do you put on top of um, on top of it? Different soil. So we'll we'll just say the word of God surrounded by different types of people that are going to help build you up and begin to um, to plan a new route because you want a root. OK, but you want it to be healthy. You want it to be strong. You want it to be rooted in the word of God. And so restoration is definitely possible. I want you to realize that uh, we often talk about what we are going through and we get stuck because we don't realize that you can be restored. There's a big market out there. OK, and so people want you to come to them. Think of a hospital. I want you to come to them because you're not feeling well. But keep in mind that you shouldn't be going to someone or you shouldn't be seeking out help when there's really no restoration. That is the end goal. And if that wasn't your end goal before today, I want you to make it your end goal today. All right. So I'm going to pass it back over to Deetra. Restoration is possible. Yes. And that is her signature. That is <laughs> Shavana's like, you might think it was all over, uh, but I am here. The Holy Spirit will work through me so we can support you in your uh, relationship. So uh, we'll get into uh, more of that. So um, let's, you know, formally introduce ourselves. So I am the founder of More In You Coaching. I am Coach D. Uh, so, yeah, I have a, a book or two or whatever. <laughs> um, uh, and I'm also a youth speaker. I'm an educator. That is what I do every day. I love working with young people. Michaela was um, one of my students. So I um, I'm so every time I see Michaela, I get so excited because of the fact that I'm like, it is an honor and it's a privilege 
for your students because let me tell you high school seniors will give you everything you're looking for no offense okay she grown now so she they don't count but <laughs> like they will give you everything that you're looking for okay so for her to actually stay connected with me like that it means the world to me so i can say so much more um because i have several students um, on my my page and I love all of them, but I love when I see Michaela because she is growing. She's in college. I'm so excited about what she's doing. But anyway, so I'm also a biblical counselor and uh, yes, they will be honest with you. And they did do that. Uh, I saw it in the chat. You know, I, I keep an eye on the chat. Uh, so, and then also I have been healed from a traumatic divorce. So if you're wondering like, well, how do you know? Yeah. <laughs> about that. So I have been healed from that. I'm happily remarried. Um, and I am so excited about that because um, while it was a wait, God did not leave me where I was. I did get healed from the unthinkable. So um, whatever your unthinkable is, um, then I do encourage you to, um, to think about that because what, what I mean by think about that is because um, we we really want to reach out and um, we really want you to reach out so that we can pray with you and so that we can take you through that deliverance process. So um, I don't mean to ruminate and think about it over and over again. Absolutely not. Um, we're trying to help you to let it all go, um, but definitely consider reaching out um, afterwards so so that we can pray um, with you and we can set up a time for that. Um, anyway, so let me go ahead and pass it over to Siobhan so, so she can introduce herself. Hey, Ivy. <laughs> so I am Siobhan, the relationship strategist, okay? And so I do own a coaching and consulting company called The Word Perspective, LLC. Um, I'm also a best-selling author, a keynote speaker, and I am a retired Navy veteran. OK, so did more than 20 years in the Navy. So uh, leadership is my thing. Um, healed from traumatic divorce as well, as you see, they kind of mirror. <laughs> it's funny how God puts people together. Right. Kind of mirror, mirror, happily divorced. Uh, oh, whoa. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, <laughs> right. And so, um, yeah. And so during that divorce time, that's when I, I got closer to God and he showed me some things. He brought me through a lot of different things. And that's when I was able to cultivate um, a lot of the gifts that were inside of me. So I want you to know that even though you might go through and we're talking about the unthinkable, whatever your unthinkable is. And right now, me and Coach D is talking about divorce as an unthinkable because I did, certainly didn't go into it thinking that that was going to be the end result. But whatever it is, I want you to keep your eyes on him because he will certainly bring you through. So pay attention to the lessons and don't dwell so much on what's going, what was going on, the negative stuff. Think about how God is bringing you through. And if there's some shame, if there's some, uh, you feel condemnation, ask the Lord to, uh, to take that away. All right. We're going to get a little bit into that later on. I won't go all the way in there, but yeah. That's a little bit about me. And absolutely, if you need to reach out, please do. Yes, absolutely. And we'll go over how to do that and all of that. So what, what you're going to learn, you're going to learn how to let go of the pain, the hurt, the disappointment, how to cultivate a healing and restoration process with Christ. It is a process. Let me repeat. It is a process. So um, this is not a one and done kind of thing. Um, however, we do have methods that are going to, um, I would say, help that process be a little less painful <laughs> um, because it is painful when you go through traumatic things. But with Christ, um, he can do so much um, in you to help you with that. Um, utilizing the tools that will help you with emotional regulation because um, emotional regulation, when you're being triggered, one thing that I learned from one of the new members of the group, he is, he's got tons of experience. Maybe you'll end up finding who he is. But anyway, um, he's got ton of experience in the deliverance space. Um, but he, uh, one of the things that he said in one of his training videos is that God will allow triggers so that he can allow you to see the parts of you that need to be healed. So we don't need to be like running away from triggers. Um, we need to just say, okay, God, what is this about? 
and then God will heal it, okay? Um, and then also create a plan to heal, transform, and rebuild after the unthinkable. So you're going to learn all of this, which is a lot. So that's why we are here to support you after this masterclass, because we're going to give you a lot of information, but then how do you actually put this information in practice? Okay. So uh, that's why we want you to stay connected. That's why you're in a Facebook group and all of that, so that you have access to people who are counselors, to people who are ministers, to people who are believers, whether they're a professional or not. So the first phase is the healing process of letting go of the hurt, the pain, and the disappointment. So I know for me, um, I definitely struggled with letting go. So as a result, it was a part of my purpose where um, the Lord said, I'm going to use you to help other people, teach them how to let go. So that's what he's doing. So there is a purpose for your pain. So uh, this particular quote, um, a lot of people struggle with this um, whole idea. Why did God allow this to happen to me? How could this happen to me? Why me? So this particular uh, quote I had to put in here at the very beginning, he will not always take your afflictions from you, but he will comfort and lead you with love through whatever storm you face. So sometimes people think like they're just, God is supposed to just take them out of everything. And if he didn't, then they get mad at God. But then the Bible says, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord deliver if them, you know, that King James version, the, he will deliver you from all of them. You know, sometimes you got to say how you say it. Um, but that is, is Psalms um, 34 and 19. Psalms 34 and 19. Oh, uh, minister, um, I always want to say minister black because um, of clubhouse, but uh, minister Robert um, Greg is here. So, so happy to see him, but I'm going to pass it over to Siobhan and see if she has anything to add here. Just a little bit on what you were talking about, how oftentimes we want to blame God. <laughs> when you get in your word, man, God is so gracious. So even though we want to blame him, um, it's a part of accountability. I'm not saying that things don't happen to us. Sometimes sometimes we are the cause of what happens to us. All right. But God is a gracious God. And he's so gracious that he doesn't always punish us or give us what we deserve because of it. Okay. And so we need to really keep our, our nose in the book. Okay. So read our word so we can know his character. And then the more that you learn his character, the more you will see that God doesn't cause afflictions. All right. So it's a mindset shift that we have to go through. Um, a lot of times we, like I said, we, we blame God, but some of the stuff is us or other people, but then that's where forgiveness comes in. Remember that the Lord gave us a commandment to forgive. It's not an option. Okay. <laughs> that could be probably a training for another time, actually not an option, but um, deep down inside, when you forgive yourself, then you will be able to forgive God. Sometimes that's connected. And then also how you view him. Okay. So oftentimes we don't view God as a father or a loving father because we revert back to maybe our earthly father or the people around us that were father figures. Um, a lot of times that goes hand in hand. All right. And so if you don't get that taken care of, then you will get stuck in blaming God. But I'm here to tell you that even though, because I know when I was growing up, um, you would hear, don't question God or don't do this. And that was a thing. But I'm here to tell you that, number one, God can take it. He knows us before we even begin to speak. Ask him for forgiveness. OK. And then when you are speaking with him, remember that you have to take a moment to sit back and listen because he will respond. And then the more that you do that and you build that relationship, then you will see that that reverence will grow. OK, so um, if you are at a place right now where you are blaming God, take just a few moments to be quiet. That's it. Just be quiet. All right. So I know some of us like to pout anyway. I'm not going to say nothing to you, you know, <laughs> because I'm mad or whatever. So take that moment to just sit back and listen and watch what the father says to you. So I'm going to go ahead and pass it back to you, Deetra. Amen. Um, so a lot of us don't, we've been through so much. <laughs> we don't even realize that it was traumatic because it's so much. So that's why um, if you follow our master classes, you'll probably see this slide in each master class because I want to raise awareness 
to um, all of the the different things that that can happen. Uh, so down in the root, you see the root area. You know, I'm all about pulling it up from the root. You may have abandonment. So where if there was a parent that was supposed to be there for you and they left, uh, you may have experienced abandonment, whether you're young or you're older. Maybe a spouse was supposed to be there. They left. Changes in your family, physical or sexual assault. Um, so that causes people to dis disassociate a lot of times. They just split um, because it was just so traumatic where it happened over and over and over and over again, where they're like, why is this not stopping? So as a result, then this other, um, what I'm going to call alter forms, and you have that in place to help protect you. But Jesus is there to support you in that. And but you were too young to realize it. So you didn't even know anything about Jesus. So that could have happened. There could have been an accident and anything that is perceived as traumatic from your perspective. So if it happened to you and you were overwhelmed by that, where you were like, this is too much, that's traumatic. That is traumatic. So I want to emphasize that what you've been through, it does matter. So rather the people that you grew up around, rather your friends, rather your family, maybe they're like, oh, you need to get over it. Maybe you do, but it still mattered. It still mattered. You were hurt. So um, I'm that. this is just the backdrop because we do have a lot um, that we do need to cover, uh, but I just want to check in um, with Siobhan to see if there's anything, because there's a lot on the slide, to see if there's anything that she wants um, to highlight before we move on. Double emphasizing that what happened to you and how you perceive the traumatic event is actually valid, okay? So sometimes, like Coach D said, people will tell you, get over it. You might have to, but remember, number one, you cannot heal what you won't reveal. That's the first thing. And that the person that you are going to doesn't necessarily have the capability or the capacity to hold what you are dealing with. And that's OK. So learning what your resources are so that way you can get healed. Um, don't give up right away because somebody pushes you um, away or they aren't able to handle it. We, we put our, our troubles on other people a lot of times. Not everybody is equipped to handle it, but it's OK. So right now. I know some of you out there have already done that and you're saying, oh, you know, um, I've written this person off because they weren't there for me. But I want to remind you that right now, this is a healing right here that's taking place in this masterclass. So put off that old mindset and what, whoever that was that you have um, went to and they kind of wrote you off. This is a reset right here. OK, so learn what your tools are who your resources are and go and seek those people and those resources. So that way they'll have the capacity to help you heal. Because at the end of the day, you can be healed if you want to, and you have the right tools. So I'll go ahead and pass it back to coach D girl. I am typing in the chat, the things that you are saying, I didn't want to forget um, because this is your reset for 2023. I love what you just said about um, this is a reset. So um, if you, you went through a really hard breakup or um, you went through this 2022 all year, you just seemed like it just, it felt like you couldn't catch a break. Um, this is your year. So here we go back to this roots. Like if I, what I want you to take away from this is that you got to pull it up from the root. So that's why we're going over this over and over again. We do have a method to help you with that when it comes to inner healing and deliverance. But if you are not clear about what you need to pull up from the root, sometimes it's more difficult. I'm not saying that God will still won't take it because he will. In some cases, he'll go ahead and just take it. And you're like, I'm just better now. I'm good. But then others, he will teach you how to fight the good fight of faith. He will teach you how to be a spiritual warrior. It depends on your calling. It depends. We serve a sovereign God. So it just depends on what you're called to and what he's doing in your life, how he's going to choose to heal you. So this, that being said, you've got this pain at the bottom. So at the very beginning, you saw this, this tree and you saw good things there. And then you saw some not so good things there. So now we're getting into why we're here healing from the unthinkable. 
So you've got roots of neglect. You've got roots of shame. You've got roots of abuse. You've got even roots of pride because you said, you know what, what you're not going to do is do that again. So you put up so many walls where people can't even get through to you. They can't connect with you. They can't even love you because of what the pain, the pain that is down there in the root. So if you're wondering, like, why can't I get a relationship to uh, to grow and develop? Look at your roots. You got pride down there. You got abuse down there. You got neglect down there. You got shame. So you can't show up as who you really are. You got all kind of trauma telling you that you're not good enough. You got rejection. You got abandonment. So you're afraid that they might leave. So as a result, you're not showing up as who you really are. Then you got these layers of denial. So you're just disconnected from your real feelings. You're not really even accepting how you really feel. And if you can't really accept how you really feel, how can you connect and really love somebody? That's why we have emotions. So that's why God gave us a soul, our mind, our will, and our emotions. He gave us this soul. So then that way we can feel his love. And he gave us a spirit so we can be full of his spirit. So all of this is for a purpose. So this is what you try to do. You try to medicate through all of these different things. So it's, it might be performance. I got a story for that. I can't, I got to save it for another day. Uh, because yeah, straight A's over here is how I used to try to define myself. Um, body image. So just excessively um, dieting, got a story for that. Um, approval, acceptance, drugs, uh, alcohol, caffeine, lust, um, where you always got to have some. I'm not talking about just sex. You always got to have the next biggest thing. You always got to have it. Um, fantasies, relationships, you always got to be in a relationship. You can't ever be single. You always got to have somebody. Even if it's, when I say somebody, it could even be where you always got to hang out with somebody. You can't ever have time alone. Um, you got to always be busy. You got to always be uh, volunteering for that organization. I got three jobs. Yeah, you know, I'm doing it. That's not no, I wouldn't brag about that. Like if you have three jobs because you created a lot of debt because of your other issues, because that you see what I'm saying? This is like a cycle. Um, then you got even the people that don't work too much, then they want to sit up and they want to play the game all the time. They want to watch TV all the time. They want to go to the movies all the time. They want to go to these expensive concerts all the time. They want to um, be entertained in any way, shape or form. All these trips because, you know, us older folks. We like to go on the trips. <laughs> so if you like to go on a trip, trip, it's okay. You can still type in where you want to go in the chat. I'm not judging you for that. But when you don't have the money to go and you still going, that's a problem. So <laughs> we, but, but that's okay. That's why we're here praying. We're praying about it. Um, so uh, religion, and then I'm going to stop religion. Uh, before I get up to the top and the fruit of the tree. So some people, you go uh, to church so much and involved in so many church activities where you've neglected your spouse. That's a problem. <laughs> so this is how this stuff manifests and how people um, develop these dependencies uh, with their false self. Um, and I can't wait to talk about the uh the identity crisis next month because we're going to talk about this a little more so you'll see this again probably because this um uh, this the fruit is what happens in our lives so we get we get confused we don't know um what we want to do which job to go to how to handle the conflict on our jobs we get stressed out we get anxious um, we can't really manage our life. And then here's, I'm going to pass it to Siobhan because then we get the communication problems. So <laughs> we get this communication. So Siobhan, what are we supposed to do? <laughs> we <get> these. <laughs> <laughs> what are we supposed to do? Well, before we jump into that part, um, number one, look at the bottom of the tree. You can see somewhat how it's tangled. You don't really recognize it. You might see it's one straight route, but remember that these things intertwine. So just because you are performing and you're doing something that appears to be good, it does not necessarily mean that it's not intertwined with something that is negative or that can hurt you or destroy you later on. So when we're uprooting these things and we're creating new roots, remember that we want to plant it on solid ground. All right. So we got to get rid of all these negative things um, so that the, the root is not tainted. 
So you got to make sure that you cut as much as possible, but you're not going to be able to do it. All right. I'm just going to tell you that right now. You're going to have to let the Holy Spirit do it for you. So submission, mindset shift, knowing that you can uproot these things through the help of the Holy Spirit and then putting that, that foot in there and really um, just taking a step of faith and doing it. So that's really how we, we do this. And then recognizing. So part of the problem um, is that we don't recognize. Like you guys are here right now and you're listening. All right. So that's a great step because you are be, you're able to be aware. The next thing you need to do is put something into action. All right. And so if you're unclear about where these roots are, either stem from or where they're leading to, you have people right here that can definitely help you with that. So get around someone who can steer you in the right direction, but learn so that when you want to be dependent on certain people or, um, because, you know, you can make people an idol if you're not careful. The Lord doesn't want us to do that. He didn't give us community to make other people idols. He gave us community so that we can model. Okay. So when you have someone that is because we're not all, none of us are perfect, but when someone is walking with the fruit of the spirit and you can see that tangible, okay, um, you're able to model that, pick up your own way of doing that so that way you can walk it out because your walk and how you're going to do this might look totally different than mine, might look totally different than Dietra's, okay, but it doesn't mean that it's negative. So make sure that you get in there, distinguish them roots, find out what's good, what's bad, make sure that it's replanted. Because you want to replant the good. When you cut out something bad, you want to replace it with something good. Replant it on this good in this good soil. Okay. How do you get good soil? By making sure that it is um it's uh filled and watered with the word of God. Okay. So be open to the Holy Spirit. And if you're not sure what that means, ask one of us, okay? Um Put your comments in the chat and then absolutely reach out to us afterwards. But that's how you're going to defeat this because that tree can be filled with good things. All right. So I'm passing back to Deidre. Amen. Amen. So uh, this, again, is healing from the unthinkable. So what happens when somebody leaves you? Because that that was, you know, one of if we go back here, down here, uh, the roots here was abandonment. Right. So what happens? Uh, we develop this fear of abandonment. So sometimes we struggle with separation anxiety. It depends on the person, how it's going to manifest in you. So we don't want to fully um, commit because we're like, I don't know if they're going to leave. So I'm just going to avoid that. Some of us, instead of just, we're not committing and avoiding committing, we are just like, okay, I'm going to just please you. I'm going to do all the things. Um, and then as a result, you won't leave me. Some of us, we are just quick to move on just to make sure we don't get too attached. So that's our method for coping. So ultimately, you have a hard time achieving emotional intimacy, feeling loved, which I had mentioned before, feeling loved. You have a hard time doing that. So a lot of us feel insecure and we feel unworthy of love. If you're wondering why, why would I put up with what this person is um, doing to me, how this person is treating me. Why am I even dealing with this? This is the impact of abandonment where you are just super hypersensitive. You can't nobody say nothing to you. Uh, even if it's constructive, you're like, oh, I cannot believe you're where well, you're in a, in a body of Christ. A lot of time we'll say, um, well, you know, you want to always say things in love, but constructive criticism is love. So if you got a booger in your nose, you know, and I don't tell you that to get it out. And I've totally done this before. I've watched snot like just sit there and that's messed up. You know, I'm not proud of that. I'm not proud of that. But you want people to tell you, you know, what's going on. You want people to tell you. Um, and. Also, you also want to walk in wisdom. In all seriousness, you want to walk in wisdom, meaning that um, you, you're you not going to attach yourself to any and everything. Um, but a lot of us have been so hurt, we're not even in a position to receive um, the love that someone is giving um, to us. So I wanted to talk about the impact of the abandonment because that's a lot of people's unthinkable. Okay, so Siobhan had already kind of gone over, uh, not over this completely, but she touched on it a little bit already, where the healing process, the three R's, 
Uh, the first step is you've got to realize awareness. So she was talking about earlier, the fact that you're even here, uh, that's huge. So you're willing to listen to, um, you don't have so much pride that you're like, can't nobody tell me nothing. My life is just fine. I'm doing it. Okay. Um, you are in a place where you realize that there are some areas that you need to grow. Um, then you need to recognize it, meaning that you need to just fully accept it. Because a lot of times we're like, no, I'm good. I'm good. Everything is fine. You know, I'm just living my best life. I'm speaking it into existence. I'm naming it and claiming it. You know, I'm so you're using all this Christian jargon um, when that is not the case. So, of course, you have to guard your heart. So you can't tell any and everybody you have to be with people who are safe with people who um, are spirit led, right? So that they know how to respond to you. But then that third phase um, with the healing process is also where you are making that change. And this is a part of making that change. Um, and since Siobhan already uh, touched on it, then I'll keep going here. So with the stages of grief, if you have been through the unthinkable you are grieving in one way, shape, form, or another. So the stages of grief, um, it helps to understand what the stages of grief are because sometimes you just feel like you're crazy. I'm not going to have you type that in the chat. If you ever felt like you're crazy, I'm not going to have you do that. Um, but I know I've definitely felt like, why is this process taking so long? I felt like I should be over it by now. That is, um, even if you felt that way, just hit the hearts, you know, um, because it, oh my gosh, I used to be like, I can't wait till I get over this. Like I kept talking about it. I was embarrassed <laughs> because I felt like it was taking me so long. So this really helped me a lot to understand the stages of grief. So you got the shock stage where you can't even believe it happened. Then you've got um, the denial stage where you're like, um, no, there's got to be a way for me to fix this. There's got to be something that I can do. You might even get into people pleasing, trying to fix it, whatever the situation is, because everybody has different situations. Then you got the anger stage where you just frustrated. You sometimes you're even plotting revenge in this phase. Like what you going to I'm going to bust the windows out of his car. That kind of <laughs> feeling. I'm not saying to do that. Be angry and sin not, okay? Um, but some of you may have done that in the past and then you got bills to pay and you did a bid. So <laughs> we just want to uh, be grateful that you are out now and you are in, you, you're free. So we're trying to get you all the way free. Um, so no more busting the windows out of anybody's car. No more setting stuff on fire. Some of you have done this stuff. I already know. You ain't got to tell me. You, you don't got to like it or nothing. I already know. So the bargaining stage um, where you're just trying to seek to figure it out, like, okay, well, we could do it like this and we could still have, if, if, I'm, if I'm thinking of a relationship or breakup, because it happens so much, um, where you're like, well... What if you, um, one of my crazy ideas, I'm not proud of this, but here it comes. Um, one of my crazy ideas, we can have an open relationship. That didn't happen, just so you know. <laughs> that did not happen, but it was a thought. Like, maybe we could just be open and like, I see who I want, you see who you want. That's bargaining. That's an example of what that looks like. Um, depression stage where you're just like, man, I'm really sad about the loss. I'm crying. Um, sometimes the, the tears are uncontrollable at times. Um, that's when you do want to get some help if you can't like pull it together because you got to go to work. Um, you got to go to school or whatever it is that you're doing. Um, you might want to definitely get some help about, um, if you are in that, that phase and you just can't seem to because it might be even death. If it's the unthinkable involves death. Um, that's really, really tough. Um, so definitely not going to joke about that. Um, and then you've got this phase where you're seeking these solutions. Um, what can I do? Um, what can I do? And then you reach the acceptance phase. Um, we are also going to talk about it from a biblical point of view um, as well right after this. So that's why um, the scriptures are always there, Psalms um, 51, 10 through 13. So those of you that know the power of the word, write that down. 
Um, this is one of my favorite scriptures, creating me a clean heart, oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. So um, I'm going to pass it to Siobhan because Siobhan is um, in the process of becoming a therapist as well as she's already a strategist, a relationship strategist. See if she has anything to add. And thank you for the love. <laughs> the only thing that I would add to that, and just a reminder that these stages don't go one, two, three, four, five. They can come and go. You might skip some. <laughs> you might go go back to some. <clears throat> excuse me. And everybody's process is different, and that's okay. So when you have outside people telling you, well, sometimes they won't tell you anything. Okay. So I'll let you know that um, sometimes I have a hard time when there's people around me and there's different stages of grief, like when they're dealing with death and stuff. Sometimes I don't know what to say because I'm not currently feeling it uh, myself, and so I can't possibly be like, oh, I know what it feels like. Um, I can be empathetic. But remember that when somebody is grieving, you sometimes they know how to tell you how to support them. Sometimes they don't. But just keep in mind that these stages may come and go. So be patient. The best thing you can do for them is pray with them. Um, if, if they'll accept your prayer, but, you know, pray for them. All right. And then have the Holy Spirit, ask the Holy Spirit to reveal to them um, where they are so that way they can be more aware of it, but just don't be alarmed if you don't go through all the stages or that if they repeat, but remember that when it comes to grief, you can be, um, a lot of these things, you don't have to sit on them. Uh, people will tell you how to be, well, you should be this sad because of this event. You may not feel that you may feel numb. You may feel, you may be over it. So don't be surprised when you ask the Holy spirit to heal you, Remember that you can't accept the healing and it is okay. And that's what I'll add to the stages of grief. Accept the healing so that way you're able to move on. God doesn't want us to stay stuck or to um, just constantly be in a state of like when it talks about you get into depression or maybe always sad or crying. He doesn't want us like that. He offers us healing. He offers us relief. Be obedient and be able to accept that relief. Okay. It's all right. It is definitely all right. And that might help you move from some of these stages, either completely out of the grief stage or on to the next. So that way uh, your heart can become more whole. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad that you um, did share that about just it's OK, because sometimes people feel guilty for not, especially if somebody died in the situation. Um, and that's a part of their unthinkable. Some people feel guilty for moving on. So um I'm so glad that you mentioned that, but that's why we always pray that we are led by the spirit because the spirit knows what all of us need um, to hear to be supported. Um, I I found this um, a little while back, a grief process for God's people. And I was so excited because uh, we are peculiar people. So um, things don't always look exactly the way the, um, the world, the secular community um, is that that previous slide was from just, the, you know, the secular community where we, you go to, to school for counseling and you learn these things. Right. Um, but within the body, when we experience a loss, we do feel shock. We do feel um, a sense of hopelessness. Um, then we start wrestling with that pain. Um, we really start wrestling. We, we start feeling that guilt. Um, sometimes we might feel lonely. Sometimes we might feel like nobody understands. Um, that's when a lot of the lies uh, from the pit of hell, um, that's where they come from. A lot of times when we're just wrestling with all of that pain, then we, we wrestle with reality. We fight, we fight, we are fighters. Um, so we wrestle with reality. So we're, we're like, sometimes some of us go away from God. Um, we don't feel close to God. So we walk away from God um, when we're in that phase of de depression. Uh, we waver in our faith sometimes when we're just wrestling with this actually happened. God actually allowed this to happen. So uh, you you continue to wrestle, continue to tuggle with what you've actually been through or in some cases, what you're going through. And then you come to this place where you are turning back to God. So maybe you walked away. Um, I know I was a chronic backslider for a while there. Yeah. Um, so now it makes sense because I was wrestling with the pain that I had been through and that's how I responded to it. So 
you begin to turn because one thing I do know about God, what he started in you, he will finish it. So you uh, begin to turn and return to God. You um, claim God's promises. You begin to remember how much he loves you, how much he cares about you. You begin to reach out to God. You begin to confess your sin for the times you cussed him out because you was mad, whatever you lost. Um, people do that. So if you are feeling like, oh my gosh, I'm so ashamed. I can't believe that I did that. I can't believe I talked to God that way. Um, I can't believe I felt that way about God and stuff like that. That's a normal part of the process um, because you're turning and you, you're you having that heart of repentance moment. And then you move on to this healing process in which you're um, the, towards the end of your healing process in which you are helping other people. So you're helping other people to accept what they've been through, to develop a new hope, to develop new relationships. So this is a good segue into um, the relationship strategies, um, how they're able to develop these new relationships. They've been through so much pain. So as a relationship strategist, how do you develop these new relationships after going through all of this? So once you're, and we're looking at here, once you're in that healing spot, uh, remember when I said earlier that it's okay to accept healing? Stay there. Oftentimes we go back deliberately, okay? Outside influences and not really remembering what God has done for us. So take inventory, make sure that you remember what he did so that way you know that he had the power to hold you and to heal you before and he has the power to help you move forward. OK, and so when you're going into a new relationship, healed um, and whole and happy, um, you're able to bring that to the next person. Now, I'm not saying that you need to be the healer for the next person, but we do know that when we're in relationships, they're often mirrors. OK, so whatever's going on with you, your partner's going to put that mirror up <laughs> and it's going to reflect something that you're doing or something that's inside of you that may need to be healed. But I want to let you know that there is a positive side as well. So when you come into so so this is for those who have said, oh, man, I can't believe I got with him. He got so much stuff with him or she just, man, I don't know if I can move forward with her. OK. And especially we'll use the marriage as um, an example, because, you know, God is for marriage. We're pro marriage here. Um, we understand that divorces happen, but we're pro marriage. So let's just go with that relationship. When you're in a marriage and you're already in it, there is no OK, well, I'm about to just go out if we're doing things the kingdom way. Right. And so you're able to rub off on your partner. You are. That's good or bad. So you continue to be the light. But remember that God has to ultimately put inside that person um, the healing. So you can be a light. You can be an example. And I will tell you from firsthand experience, there's something called modeling that you can do. Um, you continue to display, let's say, good behavior. For example, if you're in, a, uh, in an argument, so you guys are always yelling back and forth, lower your voice every once in a while. I guarantee you that if you be consistent with it, the next time you guys are in an argument and somebody flares up, uh, say you're the one, say I'm the person, me, I'm the one to always yell it because this happened to me. <laughs> my husband got me one time. He lowered his voice and I'm sitting there thinking to myself, oh, OK, maybe I should lower my voice. So the point is modeling. You can model good behavior and your good characteristics can shine and the light that's within you can shine so that way both of you can grow together and move forward in the Lord. And it's OK. And another thing, watch your words. We often identify and I think we're going to get into this in the identity piece. We often say things that create an identity. The more that you speak, um, the more that it, you hear it, right? So it's in your heart. It's like a, a cycle. It's in your head. It's in your heart. It's in your mouth. The more things that you speak, that's that's what you're going to be. The Lord told us, you know, what's in our mouth. That's what we create. Okay. We create um, things with our mouths. So the more that you speak positive, you're able to negate those negative things that we've told ourselves. So stop speaking that this is just how I am because you are able to change no matter what anybody has told you in the past. Remember I said, this right here is a reset. So forget what you heard. You are able to change. You don't have to stay stuck in the things that you've done in the past. If you want to change, begin with your mouth. 
Okay. Stop calling yourself the things that you've called yourself in the past. Stop saying that you are a certain way and that you move a certain way um, that is negative because you've taken on that identity and it's not the identity of Christ. All right. So that's one of the ways that you can move forward in a healthy whole relationship. And it's okay. Remember that um, relationships around you may, they may not look the same as yours, but that's all right. So um, stop looking to the next person as a template, it's okay to, you know, to gather and to, to, I'm not saying don't be friends with people and don't, um, kind of get about some ideas because there's wisdom in people who have done this for a while or who have the experience or who have the knowledge. There's nothing wrong with that, but make sure that your, um, foundation and what your relationship is built upon is what the Lord wants. So start there, ask the Lord, what does he want for this relationship? And then actually build on that. Um, and the last thing, remember that it may not look the way that you thought it was going to look when you first started this thing. OK, so we have some ideas and some intentions that we go into things with. But the Lord often in it, this is when you're asking him to take over and to come and to, to heal some things. OK, and to give you the ability to heal things within your relationship. It may not look how you imagined it. But the Lord is going to give us greater things that we could even imagine. So I'm going to pass it back to Deetra. Amen. Amen. So we're still in this process. <laughs> we're still in this process. My goodness. So um, I'm glad that Siobhan mentioned um, earlier that it's not like a straight. It could be different here. I'm hitting the ring light here, y'all. Um, it could be <laughs> uh, different stages um, all over the place. So um, I just really wanted to emphasize that that in your stages of grief and in your experience, you may have some emotional outbursts. So if you are struggling with that, that's why some people will say, I need help with triggers. I need help with triggers because they're grieving and they don't even know what they're grieving of in some cases because they've been through so much. So um, you may be angry. You may get scared. Um, you might be doing the, the soul searching. You just may be all over the place. It's hard for you to make decisions. Um, you may feel really lonely. There's a lot of emotions that you will experience as you're going through this killing process. Then you get more drama. So here come more stuff. Like You're like, are you serious um, at this point? So eventually you do get to the point where you're able to form these new healthy relationships. You're able to come out stronger than ever before. You're able to develop these new patterns because that's what we are here to do, supporting you to pull up the pain from the root so you don't keep going through the same thing over and over again. We're here to give you hope. We are here to give you, to usher in this new season, this new season of hope, this new season in which God is using your story, your your testimony, even if you're not doing this in a formal way like we are, but maybe it's just you sharing your testimony of how God took you through and how he helped to heal you from the unthinkable. Because even in sharing your testimony is there's power even in your testimony. So I wanted to, I wanted to make sure that everybody is clear. So please let me know um, whether it's giving a heart or um, a like, a comment, or whatever, that um, that we're all clear about um, the, the stages of grief and the process, the healing process, and what that looks like. And I'm not seeing it yet, but we want to go into the stages. I saw one more. I saw another heart. So somebody liked um, the video. Um, so I appreciate that um, because we want to make sure that we we do understand before we move on to the next thing. That's the teacher and me. Like everybody get it. That's what we do. Thumbs up. Yes. <laughs> so um, so thank you. Um, Prophetess Robin, I think that's her um, in the chat is um, giving a heart, like letting us know that because um, I can't see everybody. Um, but my husband is also um, in, in the chat um, checking out if you do have any questions along the way. So now we're going to get into the stages of relationships. So what Siobhan would say to that is expect them to change and grow, right? <laughs> 
expect them to change and grow. So with these stages of relationships, I'm actually going to pass that over to uh, Siobhan because she loves, uh, you know, she's a relationship strategist. So I'm going to pass this over. All right. So as you can see under, there's five stages of a relationship. So uh, <laughs> initially you might be attracted to a person. All right. So whether that's physical attraction, emotional attraction, um, you know, that usually starts the whole relationship thing. Now, um, whether that's relationship in your mind, <laughs> their mind, both of your minds, that's to be <laughs> determined. OK, but that that might require a conversation and that goes into communication. Um that's a little bit later on. Well, that should be the whole thing, but we might talk about that a little bit later on. Infatuation is when, you know, those feelings come up and maybe you're feeling um, what people call like the honeymoon stage, the butterflies. And, you know, I'm really starting to really like you, you know, um, and then the commitment um, actuality, you know, you're starting to realize that this is, this is a thing and the love and commitment, um, it should be a mutual thing. Hopefully it is, you know, and that's where that communication comes in. Um, speaking with the person and communicate your feelings, not only communicating them and expressing them, um, in a manner that you're comfortable with and a manner that your partner is going to receive that might require some, um, some shifting, you know, um, I know a lot of us have probably heard of the five love languages, and I think that's a great start. And it's a great start to if you if you're not familiar with how you receive love. And then also, if you take that test with your partner, it's a good assessment and way to re to learn how your partner receives love, because at the end of the day, love is unselfish. Right. Um we are supposed to, in a relationship, ideally, if we are making sure that we are um, loving our partner the way that they would like to be loved, and the partner, our partner is loving us the way that we like to be loved, you know, then ideally, we should be, I don't like to use the word happy because that <laughs> fluctuates, but we should be content enough to be able to move on and progress. So when you get to progression, um, that's the permanence. OK, and then that can mean different things to different people. It could be just like a permanent. We have made a commitment that we are going to be together. Um, it could lead to marriage, but it depends on where you are, uh, what your ultimate goals are, you know. And um, let me just say this. A lot of times people will tell you, get all these things up front, make sure that you are clear before you jump into a relationship. And I agree. But I also know that the reality is that a lot of times we don't do that. So don't ever think that you are in any of these stages and that it's that you can't speak up. You can speak up at any point in time. And even if something changes, because relationships, we all we always are changing and growing. OK, so at any point in time when something needs to be uh, readjusted, speak up, have that conversation and then action. OK, so we we change our habits and we change our um, what's going on in the relationship by creating new habits. And the more that you when you pick up a habit, uh, the more that it's permanent, it becomes more permanent when you do it over and over again. OK, just like a negative habit can um, can form a positive one can as well. So I'm going to go ahead and pass it back to Dietra for these five stages of a relationship. So um, I think that we are ready to talk about change <laughs> um, at this point, because uh, that is one of the things that you said when we were putting this together, um, talking about how change is go just going to happen. And then I love what you said about how sometimes as the relationship progresses, people think, well, aren't you supposed to make me happy? Like, isn't, aren't, I'm just supposed to be happy. And that is not always the case. So there are these wanted and expected changes, and then you have unwanted uh, changes as well. So we have to, as um, believers, we have to be ready. We have to be putting, we have to put on the whole armor of God and we always have to be ready and get our joy comes from the Lord. The joy of the Lord is your strength. So change is going to be inevitable. There's changes that are going to happen. Some changes you expect, some changes you don't expect. But what you do have to know is that God is with you in that whole process. Um, when it, whether it's expected, whether it's wanted, whether it's unwanted. 
Uh, now, when it all goes down, like when it when it turns and goes to the left, because we you can have a relationship where have, you have ups and downs, you have uh, expected changes, you have un, that's just a normal relationship. So what happens when it goes to the left? How can you tell when it's when it's going to the left, right? So um, you 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 have this honeymoon phase um, at the beginning of a relationship. So you're super excited um, at the beginning of the relationship. So um, as much as I would have loved um, to go into um, some of this um, stuff that has been out there as far as um, the the toxic cycle and all of that. Um, I thought that we'll just keep it keep it simple um, and talk about what we're all already familiar with. We're familiar with that honeymoon phase where um, we are getting back together after all of the drama. So you got the tension is where it starts, right? So you start to kind of pull away. You start to feel a little nervous. You start to feel like there's a problem within the relationship. You're trying to fix the relationship. You're trying. You kind of want to leave. And that's where Siobhan comes into place. <laughs> um, if you're believers and you're married, that's not what we're that's not what we're gonna do. So you kind of want to leave because you're really frustrated, you're really angry. Um, you feel like you might do something wrong in this phase when this tension happens. And then um you got this explosion that does happen. The explosion happens due to your triggers because we already talked about the roots at the, you know, where you got a lot of trauma and you had a lot of drama in your life. So you've been through some things. So you're trying to protect yourself from being hurt again. And sometimes you might have even experienced physical abuse. Um, you might actually give in if you're dealing with somebody that's manipulative. You might feel like they are trying to um, trap you in that relationship. You might be really scared. You might feel guilty if they're 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 man. This term narcissist. Thirty second rant. Okay. Everybody is not a narcissist. So I need you to stop doing this. I need you to stop thinking that your ex is a narcissist because they played you. I've had several exes play me. They're not narcissists. Okay. So a narcissist, and we're not this, I said 30 second rant, because a narcissist is actually in listed in the DSM. For those of us that are in the, on the professional side, those of us that are certified as um, counselor, I'm more of a biblical counselor, but there's people that are in the group that are certified counselor that's taken the test. They, these people are not narcissists. They just played you. They're just like struggling in their character. God loves them. They're not narcissists um, just because they played you. Done with the 30 second rant. So um, what I want to say is that through this explosion, this big thing, because it, it varies and everybody got their own story, um, you may be in a phase where you your relationship could be restored. And that's where Siobhan comes into place. So I'm going to, she, she can help in any of these areas. But um, I, I thought it would be good for her to make sure she talks about the honeymoon phase um, again, because when you're in this tension phase and you're trying to get the help, sometimes you don't reach out for help in time and you get the big explosion. So you might go to somebody like Siobhan to help you get to this, this honeymoon phase. So I'm going to pass it over. Okay. And so one of the biggest things to remember in here is that um, it's a cycle, right? So with a cycle, and we talked about this being a reset in this, in this class right here. So I want you to forget some of the things you've been told in this cycle. If you haven't been told before, it can be broken. It can be broken. And at any of these stages, it can be broken. All right. And so um, like uh, Deidre was saying, it goes from honeymoon to tension, tension to explosion. Then oftentimes it starts all over again. And we're talking about um, when you're able to recognize these things and you have a clear head, you have to make some decisions because at the end of the day, that's that's what it's about. It's about a decision that you have made. OK, and so nobody should be holding you hostage. I know oftentimes we hear and like I mentioned earlier, we're pro marriage, but we're also not um, pro abuse or anything like that. If you need to be separated and when you go to separation, it should be for the purpose of 
whoever needs the help, whether it's one or both of you, okay, let's just go with the abuser. The abuser needs to get the help to stop abusing, but you also need to get some help so that way you can recognize healthy boundaries, be able to put them in place. But oftentimes it's not even putting boundaries in place. It's more of um, enforcing the boundary because we'll put it up and we'll say it because it goes back to, okay, I want to please you. And I want to make sure that you're going to be there for me. It could be many different reasons why, but actually enforcing that boundary is going to help um, ensure your safety and make sure that um, this relationship becomes healthy because this thing can turn around. You can create a healthy relationship out of it, but it's some decisions that you are going to have to make and you don't have to do it by yourself. You can reach out for help and then uh, I can help you clearly see, okay, what, what stage are you in? Number one, what do you want to do about it? Because that's what it's going to have to ultimately come down to. Um, somebody else cannot tell you, um, they can make a suggestion of what you should do, but you're going to have to make a decision of what you're going to do. And then that's when other people can give you the tools. I can give you a tool to succeed in this tension stage. Now, I want to let you know that when it gets to this tension stage, I mean, just like trauma um, means different things to different people and uh, the amount of trauma that people endure and that maybe send them over to the edge is not equal across all boards. Same thing with tension. Um, a lot of times when you're in this tension stage, it's about communication and not just communication because we're doing that all the time. Even though you guys aren't talking back to us, we're communicating. Okay, so effective communication in this stage is very vital. So that way you'll know um, what the patterns are. Okay, is this something that needs to change? And if it does, how do I vocalize that? We often get stuck because we don't want to speak up or maybe we're afraid to. You know, there's something that has happened or, or told us that we can't speak up, whether it was the physical um, abuse. It could have been something in your past, but you don't want to speak up. But when you don't speak up and you don't stand up for the change, it's going to continue. OK, so um, expectations that are withheld and that are within yourself doesn't do anyone any good. So you're able to speak up, learn to speak up so that way it doesn't have to get to this explosion play, pay this ex explosion stage. So bottom line, the cycle can be broken. OK, you just have to have the correct tools to be able to get in there and stop it. There's nothing wrong with a honeymoon phase as long as it's not a temporary thing that leads into this negative cycle. All right. So I'll go ahead and pass it back to Deetra. Absolutely. Uh, so I know this is not everybody's unthinkable um, being in a, a toxic cycle of abuse, uh, whether it's emotional, physical um, or even spiritual in some cases. Uh, but I wanted to include that because um, that is something that a lot of people go through when it comes to love and relationships. They just go through this toxic cycle. So um, the reason why you're here, you're trying to th think like, well, how do I rebuild after all of this? How do I, this is where the work comes into play. So this is where we're in a construction zone right now. So why are you stuck? Um, some people know, um, some people have no clue where we pray um, for the Holy Spirit to reveal. Um, but if you know um, why you are stuck, um, feel free to share that. Feel free to share that, um, what you are experiencing. So why you feel like I'm at a place right now where I need to recover. I need to get over this. Is it that you are you well a lot of people they may struggle with saying that it's bitterness um they may struggle um a lot of people are familiar and comfortable with saying that it's anger um uh, people are comfortable with saying that it's hurt but we don't want bitterness to seep in seep in we don't want hate to to seep in um that feeling of feeling like you are inferior feeling like you're not good enough for somebody to love you, feeling like you um, are insecure. So even when you do try to move on, uh, you just don't have the confidence um, to be able to move on and do things. Um, feeling like you, um, that disapproval feeling uh, where you're like, well, if I do try to do this, I feel like I'll be shamed. I feel like I'll be humiliated. I feel like they'll make fun of me. I feel like they will laugh at me. 
Um, that's in regards to your purpose. So what, the reason why you're stuck, you do need to um, explore that a little more. I'm not going, if, you, if you're if you able to identify what it is now, um, feel free to share. Um, otherwise, um, we can talk about um, that later. Um, but what we do want to make sure that you know, because this is from the last masterclass that we did, um, they said they needed more information on triggers. So what is a trauma trigger? Um, a trauma trigger is something that causes your mind to recall a traumatic event or series of traumatic events. So that these events are related to your five senses. So whatever, something that you saw, something that you heard, something that you smelled, something that you tasted, something that you touched, you are like a computer where you're taking it all in. And sometimes your brain in an effort to protect itself will just say, we're not remembering that but it's still stored within you and it gets, we're not getting as deep, but I'm going to say this quickly. Um, if you have been through a ser uh, generational trauma, if your family has been through generational trauma, then you have an actual trauma imprint um, within you to where uh, you're like, well, I've never been through this. Why am I reacting this way? Because it's in your bloodline. So um, that being said, if you have questions about what I just said, um, definitely type that in um, the chat so that we can um, explore that a little later. But um, for sake of time, we're going to keep going. Um, how do I respond to trigger? So when you've experienced the trauma of abandonment, this is how some of these triggers are formed. Whether it's neglect, we've gone through where it could be a number of things that you have experienced. But when you've experienced these things, this is how the triggers are formed. This is how you get to this point where you're going from zero to 100 real fast, you know. And we in uh, our culture, we have made it like it's a cute thing. That is not cute <laughs> to be like blowing up on people. That is not it at all. Um, it's a bad witness where you're in church one minute and then you cussing somebody out um, on the phone as you're walking out of the church. Like there, there's, there's some issues with all of these. Um, what happened to a soft answer turns away wrath. So, but what I will say with that, this is not to beat anybody up. This is just to raise awareness to this. So what we want is for God to restore to us the joy of our salvation. So when we got saved and we were just all on fire for the Lord and we didn't want to hurt anybody and we wanted to do the will of the Lord and we wanted to, to live for him, we were willing to do whatever it took and then something happened. So we're here to support you through all of that. If you have a willing spirit, right? Um, that's obviously you do or you wouldn't be here. So this is what I want you to do. Those of you um, that are still with us, you know, I like for you to let me know that you are here. OK, so when I felt triggered, so let's think of a time when you were recently triggered. I know I was I was recently God brings stuff up in me all the time. So um, he's constantly revealing so that he can heal. So, of course, I've done a lot of work. But God is, um, that's why he He wants us to a place where we're lacking in nothing. So I'll, I'll share with you, I got the, get the issue in your mind. Does everybody have it in their mind? If you have it in your mind, put like, hit the heart, <laughs> hit the heart button if you have it in your mind. If I see one, then that means I can go on. That means somebody is listening. All I need is one. I'm, I'm looking for a heart here. So if you are listening, get back to your phone. And let me see, um, you hit a heart. I know it's a few of us here. Okay, so Prophetess is listening. So Virtuous, I just saw you in and she's with me. She's got it in her mind. What we're doing right now is when I felt triggered. So you're thinking of that time when you felt triggered. I wanted to make sure everybody had the opportunity. So Virtuous, she has in her mind that situation when she felt triggered. So now that we have that situation in our mind, how did you feel? So um, I'm looking for mind. I felt disrespected. So if, if I were to type it in the chat, 
I'm going to type it because I got it up here. I felt, let me see here. I felt disrespected. I want to see you type it in the chat um, because I'm definitely about interaction here. I felt disrespected when I felt triggered. So we, of course, we can't go all into it. We do, we do go into it if we're in a workshop. I felt frustrated. Here we go. So we're gonna keep we're gonna keep going, um, and we're gonna keep an eye on um, on that chat uh, for how you felt. Or does anybody? Let me let me go back just to see if people are because some people may be still looking to see what they felt. How did you feel? How did you feel when you were triggered? Powerless, disrespected, absolutely powerless. Okay. So I'm going to wait for one more before I go and talk about triggers a little more. And you need this information for the, the workbook. So um, that's why I'm pausing here for anybody um, that did purchase the workbook. You'll need to kind of have an understanding of this. I felt lonely. I got it. Okay. So you can always go back um, and loneliness, man, um, just feeling like nobody is there for you is the worst. Um, that is the worst. Like where is, I joke about it cause I do joke a lot. Um, <laughs> when you get to know the real me, you'll notice like I do, um, joke quite a bit, but that feeling of ain't nobody write me. They nobody come for me. They ain't put no money on my books. Like <laughs> that's like for real, that's what we doing. Like when you was locked up, I was down. <laughs> it's the worst ever. <laughs> You're like, but now that I'm down, you can't, you can't. Oh, okay, I see how it is. That's you know, I got a little hood in me, obviously. Uh, but yeah, so it looks like we we got our triggers down. So now, so let's talk about these triggers. So there's a difference between you got your internal triggers and you have external triggers. You need this um, for the workbook. So if you're like, okay, what am I going to do with this workbook? You need to know how to identify what your internal triggers are. And then there's a worksheet in the workbook for you to actually write all of this in there, or you can just follow along here, which is completely fine. So um, internal triggers, they include anger, anxiety, uh, loneliness, Sometimes you have problems in your body where your muscles um, get really tense. Um, I believe that arthritis and all kinds of stuff develops as a result of some of the trauma that you have experienced in your life. Pain. Um, these are internal triggers, sadness, uh, vulnerability, where you're just like, oh, I can't I can't share. I, I prayed against that at the very beginning, feeling overwhelmed. These are an internal trigger that can stop you from your purpose. Um, and then any of these memories tied to the traumatic event as also, these are all in, inside of you. So nobody else is provoking any of this stuff. This is all the stuff that's inside of you. So external triggers, um, That when I thought of a trigger, of a time that I was triggered, it was an external trigger. So this was coming from the environment that I was in. So it wasn't that I just felt lonely or um, it wasn't that I just felt angry out of nowhere, which can happen um, as a result of trauma, but it was something that someone else did. So that's why as believers, we have to watch what we see. We have to watch what we hear. We have to watch what we take in the environments that we're in, because you could be putting yourself in environments in which they are triggering for you. So it could be a movie, a TV show, something that you read uh, reminds you of something that you've been through. It could be where you've been. Um, it could be a specific date. I know some people, they're really big on holidays, anniversaries and stuff like that. Um, Siobhan just typed in the chat music. Um, a lot of people love their music, the times and seasons. Um, and it, even you can type in the chat if you know what these external triggers are for you. So if you know that when you watch romance movies and you've been single for 10 years like I was, um, that's not a good idea <laughs> because that might trigger you to feel sad. Um, 
It just is what it is. So if you know that this is an external trigger, then don't do that to yourself. Um, another thing is it could be a specific time where of the day. So sometimes this is what the enemy does. So we haven't got into how that connects. Um, I know my husband and I, we will do um, a self-deliverance masterclass where we're going to be talking about how all of this stuff connects. Um, but it's going to be um, well into the year. But I, I'm so excited about um, doing that because that's what the enemy likes to do to um, actually torment you. So he he likes for you every time you look at that number for you to 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 real to really irritate that wound that you have. So if you didn't watch the soul wounds masterclass from last month, watch that um, so that you can identify the wounds that you have, because we're going to get you all the way. We're going to get you free. Um, so if you stay with us, even if you're just doing the master classes and you're not doing anything else, you are still going to be in a better place. So um, how do you cope? I'm going to uh, pass it over to, to Siobhan to talk a little bit about how to cope with um, external and internal triggers. Okay. So how do you cope with external and internal triggers? Well, first, being aware of what the trigger is. So let's just imagine that we're past that part. We know what these triggers are. Don't give in to it. Okay. So it's easy to go back on a bad habit. You have to create some new habits. Um, when they come up, sometimes people want to run from them, but I would say that um, there's a couple different things. If you are dealing with this, let's just say that you're at a point right now and the trigger comes up and you need to quickly diffuse it. Don't deny it. You know, like feel what you're going to feel, but that negative thing that comes after the trigger, the explosion, the the fussing, the cussing, the hitting, the whatever, you're gonna you're able to control yourself. You have self-control. That is one of the fruits of the spirit. Okay. So you're gonna have to ask the Holy Spirit to put that within you. Um, but you also can do some things such as uh, and if you are gonna let's say music is a trigger for you, certain types of music, change the music. All right. So put on some gossip, gospel music or some worship music. OK, even put on if you like YouTube, you could go to YouTube and um, you could get the word right there. The Bible, it could read it for you. Find something that has scriptures, because at the end of the day, God's word takes all this away. All right. And so if music is a trigger, counter it with positive music. All right. Um we talk about mindfulness on here. And so we want to be really careful. Just make sure that when we're talking about meditation, we're talking about meditating on the word of God, but really centering your mind on what God has to say. Um, oftentimes we hold on to these things and we want to do something with it. We either want to um, act in, you know, about to get some get back or whatever, you know, because this trigger came up. Um, that's not always the best thing to do. All right. And so also imploding, keeping things in and just kind of like ignoring it or um, not doing anything with it and just letting it be. It's not the right thing to do either. But God always gives us a an escape and a route out. OK, so um, when we're talking about mindfulness, make sure that we are focusing on the word of God. Pray, you know, and if you have a heavenly language, pray in your heavenly language. Um but prayer is an outlet, okay? Um, and then also receive. That is some other ways. Um, deep breathing. You actually can calm your body down, you know, breathing in for a few seconds, breathing out. Because you want to relax the muscles. You want to relax your body. You kind of just want to make sure that you are um, just calm, all right? So uh, <laughs> having a clear head so you can make a good decision. All right. And then one more thing you can do. Some people like to write and they like to express themselves. So instead of speaking, um, you can either take a pen and paper, because a lot of times people um, feel that when they write and that they use a pen and paper versus typing, you know, that does something for them. Um, it is something with memory. But remember that a lot of us on here and I'm speaking to, you know, those of you who know you are a believer, believe it or not, when we write down things, you probably find out that there's some prophetic writing that goes on in these journals that you probably don't even realize. OK, so um, if you have been writing, go back and look at that. That can be an escape. All right. Um, but give yourself the freedom to 
express it. Keeping it, it keeping it all in and imploding is not the right thing to do with it. And that is just a few different ways that you can deal with these triggers. Um, ultimately, and that's just something in the moment. They they could work, you know. Um, ultimately, we want to remove the triggers at the end of the day, okay? We want to get to the point to where these things aren't even triggers. So that way uh, you don't have to do these things to process every single time. You, it may require you to seek outside help to be able to gain those tools so you can uh, remove those triggers. But in the meantime, this is something that you can do on your own so that way you can uh, get, I don't even want to call it a balance, like a semblance of peace so that way you're able to think with a clear head. And I'll go ahead and uh, pass it back to Dietra. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, definitely love the way that you made sure that you clarify what we are supposed to be meditating on. But one thing that I am hearing, I don't know who it is. I saw music is a big one in the chat. I saw people, I heard people saying like, I'm not giving up my music. Okay. So this is what I'm going to say to that. <laughs> so you're like, what are you hearing? I'm prophetic. That's what it is. So I, I just know. So this is what I will tell you about your music. Your little sad love songs. When you was with um, Ray Ray, you got a song when you was with him. When you was with CJ, y'all had a song. When you, you was with a lot of dudes. So, <laughs> you know, thank God he saved you. Um, but when you was with all of these different people, it could be a th guys too. When you was with uh, Sheila, when you was with Shaniqua, you know, you had a song. So those people come up and you remember, like you remember and you get triggered. Then you find yourself looking at a, another Shay Shay and she remind you of Shaniqua and then you in her inbox. This is how this stuff happens. I got to make this stuff plain because we are talking um, in very like, we'll, we'll say, um, I would say it's an educational, you know, I love to educate. So we got that here, but it's like, what does this look like in regular life? This is what that looks like. You watch a certain movie and it looks like you in like Love Jones or something. I don't know. Um, you watch this movie and you're like, that's how we were. Maybe we could get back together. Then you in their inbox, leave them people alone. <laughs> like, let them move on and stop listening to the songs that you used to listen to. Find you a new song. So it, we are all in different places when it comes to our spiritual walk. So I'm not going to try to tell you what you should listen to. But what I will tell you is stop listening to them same old love songs. Okay. God is giving you a new song. All right. So this right here. Um, is something similar to um, this is not this particular exercise is not in the the workbook is but it's something similar to this. So if you are one, excuse me, where you're not getting um, you're not going to be able to download the workbook for whatever reason, then this is something that you could still pull out a journal and do. So you would write um, the date, you would write the the situation, and then you would right identify the trigger and then how did you feel and then how can you respond to this emotion next time so this is an exercise that you can do where anybody that's watching this i you know my heart is to help everybody so no excuses so even people that don't want to go to counseling even people um, that don't want to get any the workbook and download it and do the exercises on their own. If you're on this class, if you're listening here, you can get a piece of paper and write three different um, situations and you'll begin to see patterns and you'll begin to, to start doing this is what doing the work looks like. Being able to identify your emotions and simply put, you can take this to your deliverance session and then share this with your deliverance minister so that they can help to get you set free. OK, because that's my biggest goal is to help people get set free. OK, so if you have any questions about this, uh, then definitely uh, let us know in the chat. Here's another thing um, that you can do.
So you can do this now. I know we're going through this pretty quickly, um, but we, we've been on for a little over an hour and a half. So um, I don't want to keep you longer than two hours because it's already a long time. So you can always um, re-listen to this. If you're like, okay, I know I'm not going to get the, the workbook um, and I'm not going to slowly go through all these slides and stuff, but I, I don't mind listening to this again. This is what I uh, encourage you to do. So if you have a journal, even if you don't have a journal, you need to get you one. But even if you don't have a journal, then you can take out your journal and say, what happens when I'm triggered? So do you get a lump in your throat? Do you feel like heat coming up in your face? Because like I know um, for me, if somebody that is super arrogant, they start arguing with me. If I argue back, then I'll get triggered and I feel heat in my face. So, you know, that's just how this looks in real life. Um, you you may get teary eyed. So I'm using myself as an example so you can so examine yourself to figure this out. So I know if I get overwhelmed, my eyes will fill up with tears. So that's something that I've noticed about myself. Um, I start to raise my voice. So, uh, you know, black folk, we be clapping, it's hilarious. So if you start <laughs> you start raising your voice and clapping and they like, what you get loud for? You may be triggered, okay? So I start to raise my voice. I may have, I know when I was going through that divorce, I definitely started clapping when I was talking to my ex-husband a couple of times. So um, I started to raise my voice, started clapping. He wasn't raising his voice at that point. So he's like, what's going on? Are you triggered? <laughs> um, I interrupt people while speaking. So I know now, I don't, generally speaking, I will not interrupt you. But if I'm a little triggered or I'm a little too excited, that's how I know that may be a trigger for me now. Like in the past, I start clapping, it's more animated, but God has brought me a mighty long way. So now um, I might interrupt, but it's rare that I would do that. Or you could be just in a place where you just want an emotional roller coaster and it's not your hormones, ladies. You know, you just all over the place, whether you on or you off, you don't know, you just all over the place. So I'm gonna pause here um, just because I know I said a lot um, I don't see anything in the chat as far as any questions, because I know when it comes to triggers, it's hard to, to sort that through. That's the question I've been getting the most. So I do want to hear feedback from you. And then if Siobhan, if you, you have any examples, um, this is a good time, um, to share or just anything to add about any of these exercises. Yeah. So what I was going to say about these exercises is uh, these are really tangible things. Uh, this is some stuff that you can actually do at home. I would suggest doing it not in the moment. OK, <laughs> um, taking some time so that way you can learn what your triggers are. Sp spend some time alone, like set aside and be deliberate about wanting to get free. And when you do that and you pull up these exercises, take some time to really think about it. Um, don't just say, oh, I'm not sure. I don't know. Ask the Holy Spirit to bring back things to your remembrance, because when you're in that moment, you'll be able to pull these tools out and be able to go. Uh, what they say about practice, like if you're on a sports team, you practice and you scrimmage before the big game. So that way it's automatic when you're in there. And that's just the same thing when we're talking about dealing with our emotions and in this point, excuse me, at this point right here, um, triggers. OK, and so you might find that you when you're doing this as well, you might uh, find that there's other triggers that you didn't think of that you'll start to see because sometimes they're connected. But remember, they can be eliminated no matter who you're going to um, to get these journal exercises, whether you're doing it here with us, what more in you in this workbook or if you're going outside help. Remember that you don't want to keep going to that person if they're not going to help cure you. OK, so I'm a big proponent that you can be delivered. You can be cured of these things. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise, um, because if not, then they're probably not doing it in the right manner. OK, maybe it's them. Maybe it's you. Maybe you're not receiving what they're they're putting out and doing the work. That's the biggest thing. Do the work and you can uh, get over these things. So take some time in your quiet time these couple little exercises. And what I will say is when you're going through this, don't be surprised if some feelings come up that you didn't expect. 
So make sure you have a little, give yourself some time, um, maybe a quiet space so that way you're not distracted because things are going to come up that you might not have expected, but it's okay. So I suggest that you pray prior to so that the Holy Spirit is there to comfort you, to guide you. And so that way, like I said, you can get over these things. It can be done. I want you to remember that and even say that out loud when you're going through this. This is what I'm experiencing right now, but I will and I have overcome, okay? We speak those things that are not as if they already are. I have overcome this. And so I'm going to pass it back to Deidre. Amen. Um, and with that, I my heart is definitely for anybody to, to be able to be supported. So that's why these are exercises that your counselor would do, right? Um, these are exercises that you can do by yourself, but a lot of people don't want to do this by themselves. So that's why people like us are here where you can set up a time and actually, or go through one of the programs because I don't do that as much. Um, I'll, I will pray with you at least once. Um, but as far as like ongoing, some of this stuff you really want to process through with somebody. So my prayer is always, and I'll pray this at the end, but my prayer is always, um, for you to be, um, connected with the right people that can support you in the way that you should go. So if you, God is giving you a solution right here. So if you've been praying like, God, help me through this, help me to get over it. This is a solution right here. So definitely um, don't take it lightly. Again, the scripture is here, creating me a clean heart, oh God, and renew a right spirit in me. It's, it's there for a reason because the God is close to the brokenhearted. So believe it or not, as you are going through all of this, he is right there. And all you have to do is ask him to come. Even if you are a person, we do um, focus on purpose-driven leaders. But even if you're feeling like, I'm not in a place to lead anybody right now. Even if you're feeling like that, he still is going to come to support you as you're going through this. So why is he doing it? Because you are his child. <laughs> That's why. So I, I included this. Um, I did. We did not include this the last time that we did this uh, training. Um, so this is a new thing that we included. But the soul care training is that we as believers, we need to take care of our minds and our uh, our emotions like we are to to know who we are in Christ. Um, we are to cast down any thought that is not like him. So here on um, this slide, a lot of times if you've been through the unthinkable and you're trying to recover, you are struggling with who you even are. Like you're struggling with identity. So that's why, again, I said I'm so excited about doing uh, reclaiming my identity next month to help you through this a little more. Um, but you're struggling with identity because you're feeling like, well, why can't I keep a relationship? Um, why does everybody leave me? So that first one, loved. Um, God wants you to know that you are loved. So even if that person told you that you would never be loved again and they were the only person that was going to love you or um, told you that if you're a man that you don't make um, enough money so no woman is going to ever be interested in you to even to love you, to love you for who you are and not what you can give and what you can provide. Um, so both sides, um, it could be very difficult um, to come out of a traumatic situation, regardless of what it looked like for you. So um, God wants you to know that he loves us. You do not have to do anything um, to get this love. It's already been given as a gift. So if somebody's telling you that you got to prove, you got to fight every night to prove your love, that is a lie. That is a lot. Um, what else is here? I'm going to point out a couple of them and then I'll um, let Siobhan point out um, a couple of them. I know the loved one um, for me pursued. When I tell you I felt invisible, like um, I have felt so invisible, like nobody sees me. And I remember telling, um, I call her my soul sister. I told my soul sister, like, I don't know when I was single all that time. Like I tried to make myself pretty for the people. And it just seemed like it wasn't working. So I'm like, nobody is, nobody's checking for me. Nobody's looking for me. I'm just like, I don't understand. But um, this particular um, scripture, God pursues you. 
God, this is even an example of how God pursues you. He's wanting to let you know that I do know how you feel, whether it's through us or through other methods. God's constantly pursuing us. Surely your goodness and unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life and I will live in the house of the Lord forever. Psalms 23 and 6. Now, if you are carnal like I was, where I wanted a boy to look at me. So you got another, you know, you got a deeper issue, but be encouraged because God is pursuing you and he is enough. Even if you are in that phase where you're feeling invisible, um, like nobody cares, like nobody wants you. So I'm going to move down to that one. I'm going to share one more and then um, I'm going to check in with Siobhan. And if you are um, listening, um, then I do want you, even if you're listening to a replay, I do want you um, to type in that which one of these type in that scripture. So if you can see this clearly type in that scripture. So my scriptures, um, as far as struggling with feeling loved, Ephesians five and two, that's my scripture. Um, feeling, struggling with feeling pursued, um, Psalms 23 and six. Cause my ex-husband told me when nobody going to want me, you know, like, well, you might get somebody, mm, you know, like he tried to downplay the type of people that I would end up being with, um, after him, like, I'm done about once you type thing. Um, if you struggle with being valuable, type in the chat, which one of these uh, scriptures that you need, because this is what you need to be meditating on. If you struggle with feeling special, if you struggle with feeling um, chosen. So this was a big one for me too. And I can say something about, uh, yes, my husband said he was a whole lie. Yes. Cause my husband want me y'all. <laughs> my husband loved me because I felt like nobody loved me. Um, but anyway, so um, type in the chat, which one of these that is a scripture that you're going to meditate on. So I'm going to pause after my last scripture chosen because I was listening in gym class. I wasn't that good. OK, so I was like the last one chosen. I wasn't that good because of effort, not because of ability. <laughs> I just was like, I ain't doing this. and didn't wonder why would nobody choose me. That's another story. But anyway. So chosen, I struggle with like feeling invisible, like I wasn't chosen. So, but what does God say? First Peter two and nine, but you are not like that for you are a chosen people. God chose you. You are royal priest. I can't wait to do this um, identity, a holy nation, God's very own possession. As a result, you can show others the goodness of God for he called you out of the darkness and into his wonderful light. So he found you in whatever mess you was in. So even though you may be even in a little bit of mess right now, he still found you. And I say that with such enthusiasm because a lot of us feel like, um, don't nobody want me. Ain't nobody checking for me. Ain't nobody write me. Didn't nobody put no money on my books. Like <laughs> that is not true. <laughs> like my husband said, that was a lie. So imagine if I would have kept thinking that. I would have kept, if I kept thinking no, nobody loves me, I'm not worthy of love, then I would have just stayed stuck in that place. So I'm going to be checking the chat because I know there are a few people on live. So if you are on live, I'm checking for your scriptures. Drop your scriptures while um, Siobhan is speaking. And I'm going to drop mine. Okay. Um, I know when you were a child, you may have been told that you were special. And that still is the truth today. So when we're talking about special, um, God believes that you are special. We all have different gifts. We all have different abilities. And um, they're, they are uh, a part of the body of Christ. Okay. And so it's very important. And so Romans 12, 4 through 5 tells us, just as our bodies have many parts and each part has a, a special function, so it is with Christ's body. We are many parts of one body and we all belong to each other. Okay. And so it might be different, but we all are special in the way that God uses us. All right. And so um, you may not have feel, felt protected, maybe by someone um, on this earth, whether it was a parent, um, a caregiver, a spouse, a, a partner, um, a friend protected, you know, in many different ways. But God tells us, 
that we are protected, okay? And so in Jeremiah 1, 8, it says, and don't be afraid of the people for I will be with you and will protect you. I, the Lord, have spoken, all right? Um, and then we'll do one more. Beautiful. You are beautiful, okay? And it's okay. It's it's not being vain. It's really accepting that you are beautiful in God's sight because Romans 10 and 15 says, and how will anyone go and tell them without being sent? That is why the scripture says, how beautiful are the feet of messengers who bring good news. Let God speak to you and give you your identity. And maybe you're saying, okay, well, how is that supposed to happen? You have a great foundation right here. We have um, many different topics and it goes with different scriptures that tells you what God thinks about you, what he says, because we know that when God speaks and what he says is what it is, okay? Before he even speaks, when he thinks a thing, it is so. He speaks and we hear it. And in this case, we can read it in the word of God. So that way we're able to get it in our spirit and believe it. And it is great to look at the Bible and, and see these scriptures, but I want you to get in the habit of actually speaking them out loud because there's something different. Oh my gosh. The word destroys yokes. There's so many things that the word does literally, and I'm not speaking figuratively. I'm really speaking literally. Speaking God's words will destroy so many things in your life, even hearing it, okay, that will increase your faith. He tells us that in our in the word. So if you're having trouble digesting who God says you are, take what we've given you right here and just meditate on those. And when I say meditate, speak them out loud. It's going to do something different to you. OK, forget what you heard before. Take these, read them out loud, digest it and accept it. All right. Um, that's the part that sometimes we get hung up on that. Oh, this is what God says. It's generic. No, this is specifically for you. OK, and it's just giving you something tangible. All right. Absolutely. Deborah. Yes. Faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God. Absolutely. It's going to build your faith. Right. And the more that you build your faith, the more that you'll be able to um, accept God's love. I, there's, <laughs> there's there's something going on with acceptance right now. OK. I want you to be able to accept it. Just sit right here in this moment. Just sit for just a moment. I just want you to just sit for a second. Just sit. Right? We get so busy and so caught up with doing things and trying to, to just be something. Receive. And if you haven't done that in a very long time, this is your permission slip to be able to receive. Okay? And God is going to give you different people and bring different things your way to be able to receive in different areas, okay? Whether it's uh, the person that you usually give to, they're going to begin to give to you. Um, even if it's somebody that does not know you, the Lord will send rest your way, okay? Accept it. This is your invitation. The Lord wants you to actually do that, okay? So do it sooner rather than later and don't make him have to do it for you because <laughs> it's not fun. It's not pretty when he tells you to rest and that in particular to rest and we don't do it. All right. So I'm going to um, eat, eat this word, literally eat it, put it in your mouth, <laughs> spit it back out by speaking it and you will see some changes. So I'm going to go ahead and pass it back to Deidre. I love what you said. When you are spitting it out, you are spitting it at the enemy like a fiery dart. And that is how you defend yourself against all of these thoughts that you are not good enough to be loved, that you're so shamed that you're not forgiven, where you're thinking, I'm not forgiven. God doesn't forgive me. Why would he want anything to do with me? I'm not valuable. I'm not important. Um, he, there's no way that God would have anything that he would want me to do. Those kind of thoughts. I'm not good enough to do um, the thing that to be a leader in the body of Christ. You know, a lot of people struggle with that. Um, that's why I like this. This soul care training for you is for every believer at any level, every believer at any level. So I want you to know that you are wanted and you are important. Um, that was one that I added to my list um, that you are wanted that um, I'm going to read that before I move on. The Lord isn't really being slow about his promise, as some people think. 
No, he is being patient for your sake. He does not want anyone to be destroyed, but he wants everyone to repent. Second Peter three and nine, he wants you. So while you're out doing whatever mess that you're doing or caught up in whatever you're caught up in because of the pain and the trauma that you've been through, God still wants you. God is still pursuing you. And if God, the God, the Alpha and Omega, the the God of all things is pursuing you, regardless of what Ray Ray said or what Shaniqua, Shaniqua said, you are still um, worthy of so much. So um, just wanted to to emphasize that. So now that we're coming up on um, the end, um, who said who said Jesus on the main line? Oh, well, Chris, Chris got that song going. And so my auntie yes. brought up the old song. <laughs> uh, auntie yeah, did it. What you want. Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! Brought me back to my um, my ABC church. Uh, but what what can you do at this point? So we went. We've gone through all of this. Um, now what? So now you might want to connect with the therapist. You might want to, you know, look at your health insurance, check out your um, benefits. You might want to connect with your local ministry um, after you do some of the exercises. If you don't have deliverance in your local ministry, um, then feel free to reach out to us. Um, so whether it's um, my husband um, or whether it's one of the people in the group, because now we have a few people um, in the group that could, uh, I'm not going to name drop out of respect, um, but we got a few people that we can um, support you. So it's not too many people uh, that we, we've got some people that we can um, support you in getting the deliverance that you need. You might need a coach because you might be like, okay, I've already started my, my healing process. Um, so I just need some accountability. You might need a mentor. Like I just need somebody that they've been there. They've been through the situation that I've experienced. And then how did they get through it? Or you might need a strategist. And we'll talk um, a little more about a strategist because I, I have a, a slide um, that explains that because uh, I was telling Siobhan last night, Siobhan, nobody knows what a strategist is. And I know it's different from a coach, but I'll let her um, I'll let her take that because I get it because nobody knew what a coach was either. Um, or you might want to do take a course um, in which you're doing some self-coaching and stuff yourself. It just depends. Let the spirit lead you. So now we do. We got the pop quiz um, and I'm going to go through the first one and then I'll have um, pass it over to Siobhan um, to go through a couple of other ones. So the pop quiz, um, I do want you, if you're still here or whether you're listening to the replay, um, type it in the chat if you know what it is. There will be no uh, prizes given today. You will only get street cred. So we will know about you in, out in these streets. And out in these Facebook streets, we're going to know that you knew what it was. So that is the recognition that you will get today for getting the answer right and typing it in the chat. So the first column, do, do you need a counselor? You need a strategist? Do you need a coach? What is it that you need? Because a lot of people are like, I don't even know where to start. This is just complicated to me. So I want to process what happened in my past. I want to focus on the trauma and the healing portions. I want to use healing and deliverance techniques to heal. I'm patient and I think I can wait for a little while for results. So um, what what do you need? Do, does that one, do you need a counselor? Do you need a strategist? Some of y'all like still like, I don't know what a strategist is. So if you, <laughs> you can guess though, if you think the first one is strategist, <laughs> you can guess Siobhan. Siobhan will, Siobhan will let you know if you're right or wrong about the strategist, okay? So do you need a strategist? Do you need a, a coach? I'm just waiting to see. Um, we're going to make it really easy because um, we're going to do a process of elimination. So do you need a counselor if you want to process what happened in the past? Do you need a strategist or do you need a coach? What do you think? Because we want you to get some, some support. So rather... We want you to find somebody, even if it's not us. Um, do you need a counselor? Do you need a strategist? Or you need a coach? I 
I got my eye on the chat. If you have I, if you don't know, then we will tell you, but you gotta say you don't know. <laughs> or just take a guess. Maybe we'll read the second one and then see read if they the second they, one. Yeah, maybe they'll they'll get the second one. Let's see. Okay. So um I think some people are not sure about the first one, or they're just not answering, which is highly likely. Um the second one, I want to focus on the future. I want to deal with what's holding me back from pursuing my purpose. I want guidance in creating a plan of actions. And um, the last one here, I want a process to create long lasting change. I need a process. Do you need a counselor or do you need a coach? Type it in the chat, even if you don't know, you can type, I don't know. This is okay. A teacher will never tell you to do this. Today, you can do IDK in the chat. Normally, I don't say that. But if you don't know, <laughs> you don't know. There's nothing to be embarrassed about because we're going to tell you the answer. Quiet group today. Because usually people respond to this one. But, well, let's do the last one and see if they... They, they respond to that one. It's on you, Siobhan. All right. So do you need a counselor, a strategist, or a coach if you want a roadmap uh, for, for my challenge? If you want to focus on a solution? If you want a direct approach? Or if you have an unclear vision, will you need a counselor, a strategist, or a coach? Let's see. Who said they're not sure? I said thank you in the chat. Thank you, Auntie, because we just wanted to know. <laughs> uh, like, if you don't know, you don't know. It's all good. Um, we'll give you the you answers, know, you huh? I said we'll give we'll give them the answers. Yeah, we're gonna give you the <laughs> answers. Let's go back to the first one because um, usually people do get quiet when they don't know. Um, so thank you, Auntie, for putting it out there. Who put a who's put a strategist? Did they get it right? Who was that? Who was that? I can't see. Tashina. Absolutely, Tashina. Oh, Tashina, you cheating. <laughs> <laughs> yep. She is on the um, she is on the team. Yeah. <laughs> but some, some people are not familiar. So yes, right, good job, right. Tashina. You got street cred. That was that right. was the prize, just in case yep. you didn't know. That was the prize <laughs> with street cred out in these Facebook streets. But Tashina, the encourager, she'll be on with me. Um next month uh talking about identity one of our favorite topics uh but tashina gave the answer strategist but you know the relationship strategist she has got to elaborate on that because i talked about her so she got to elaborate on that <laughs> yeah so um it might be this this term just you know strategist in general you may not have heard it presented this way but if you think of some of the characteristics i'm sure that you know um if you need this type of approach exactly what we're talking about in column three, but usually they're going to be more direct with you versus let's just say a coach. A coach is going to maybe ask more questions and ask you to come up with this thing on your own. Um, sometimes you might need a more direct approach like, nah, you're going the wrong way. Come back over here. Or maybe do this, do that, do that, and you will receive this result. Uh, that's more along, more along the lines of a strategist will be more direct. Okay. Um, yeah. And, and roadmaps, you can get roadmaps both with a coach and a strategist and actually, you know, consultant as well. Um, but with a strategist, that roadmap usually will be, it, it'd be collaborative, but you'll be able to know that once I do this and once I do that, and notice I said, once you do it, <laughs> and I said, I, but I meant once you do it, cause you have to be the one to do the work. Um, cause somebody can, map it all the way out for you. But if you don't do it, it's not going to work. But there's guaranteed results um, and you have an expected end. And so that's the slight differences. And what I will say is that a lot of times coaches, consultants, and strategists, and we'll just say coaches and strategists, go back and forth between what they do. Okay. It's just that me being a strategist, that's mostly, that's the main thing. Okay. So that's the upfront part of it right there, but it, it can waver in between. It, probably all three of these are going to waver in and out a little bit. So yeah, that's the, that's the main portions and the main uh, little points about a strategist. 
So now that that's being said, I'm just checking. Um, my auntie said I need guidance. So that would be more the what the coaches do, that middle column there. So when we do our um, soul care um, check-ins, because we already did the soul therapy masterclass, we did the soul therapy uh, workshop. So now they have you can always go back and get um, the materials. So then that way you can work through um, your plan of your um, restoration plan. So the restoration plan was in, there's a restoration plan in the Love Lessons um, book too, but there's a restoration plan in the soul, um, the soul therapy workbook. So you'll be able to, to do it like Jesus is your life coach, where you go through and you do it with the Holy Spirit, you do the exercises or whatever, or you can go find a um, coach that that really you feel led to that God is going to speak through that coach. So um, a lot of times you do need someone that is a prophetic coach or strategist uh, like um, Siobhan, uh, where they could kind of, you know, that they're going to hear from the Lord. Um, as they are um, coaching you through it. So I'm not saying that they can't help you at all if they're not prophetic. Um, but, you know, that is it's a part of who I am. So, of course, I'm going to lean toward that. So I hope that that did um, help um, with um, you understanding what you need. And you can always follow up with that, too. Um, as far as the coaching programs available, um, I'm going to run through these really quickly because we're over in time. Um, but we have leadership and co leadership coaching. We've got inner healing and deliverance coaching. We've got soul therapy. Um, we've got soul care coaching where if you're, you're not doing deep work, um, as far as the, um, more op sessions more often, but you're just doing a quick check-in. Um, and then, uh, we got some more, uh, deep work when it comes to break free and staying free and breakthrough coaching. So if you're like, I don't know what any of that means, you can set up a time, um, with me and I will, um, pray with you and, um, support you in figuring out what your next steps needs to be. And then, um, for the people who are in a relationship, um, and even if you're, even if you're not, um, but I know Siobhan loves, uh, restoration. So um, even if you're not, um, you can still talk to Siobhan is a, a strategist. So I'm going to pass it to her for her to talk about what she offers to. Yeah. So um, whether you're preparing to get into a relationship, you're already in one, um, a committed relationship, or if you're in a marriage, then there might be a program out there for you. Um, sometimes you can be uploaded with tools prior to getting into a relationship that's going to actually help you avoid a lot of mistakes and heartbreak <laughs> that people who are already in it have um, have experienced in the past. So you don't have to go into a relationship uh, expecting something negative to come out of it. So that's you know either the pre-engagement or if you want to come by yourself, if you're single and you're preparing. OK, and you want to get rid of some of these uh, negative mindsets, because oftentimes you hear people say, uh, you know, I'm not about to get in nothing because I don't want to know if you want to get rid of that and actually properly prepare. There's something for you and we can do it either on an individual basis or in a group basis. That's the same thing with the couples, the couples together with just myself or in a group with other couples. Um, there's a program for that as well. So reach out if you want more information on that and we can see whether or not. We have a, um, a program for you. Yep. So um, at this point, I didn't, um, I think we offered a lot of opportunities for people to ask questions and things like that. Um, so I didn't see any um, extra, extra questions that we have not addressed. So you already know where to find us because you're in the Facebook group, but we do a lot. If you're not on um, Clubhouse, um, you'll, you'll see us. We just had a marathon room in Clubhouse. So uh, we do quite a bit in Clubhouse. Um, Instagram, I'll be posting um, the faith um, decrees and the confessions and things like that. I'll post that kind of stuff there. 
Um, and then you can always um, reach out via email. But if you're wanting to um, set up times um, and try to learn more about how to get some additional help or you have questions about the workbook, everything is in the Facebook group. But sometimes people have um, problems finding stuff. So just inbox one of us and we will um, help you out. So um, that being said, uh, we'll, we can just say a quick prayer and then we will be done. So I thank all of you for um, sticking with us um, to the very end, because um, that's huge. Um, and when it comes to Facebook and all of that, people do not stay to the very end. So I appreciate each and every uh, viewer. I had to say each and every, because <laughs> just to make sure. Everybody understood. Everybody on here, I appreciate you all listening. And I'm hoping that you um, really got some value out of this. And I do hope that you share it. Um, so I know at least one or two people did share it um, because you never know what people are going through. So people don't like to talk about this um, sad stuff. Um, but I hope that I presented it in a way that that made it bearable. And I hope that Siobhan did the same. But Siobhan, do you want to um, pray us out? Sure. So Lord, we just thank you. We praise you. We give you honor for this time because it was your time. And Lord God, I thank you that you were able to deliver your word in the way that your people needed to hear it. And so as we depart, Lord God, let everything sink in that you need to sink in, Lord God, and let people have the, um, let them have the strength and put down their pride so the way they're able to reach out uh, first and foremost to you and let you guide them so that way they're able to receive what they need to receive uh, for healing. And so, Lord God, um, thank you that healing was in this place <clears throat> through word and through action, Lord God. And I thank you that as moving forward, um, as the people come to this ministry, they will find more and more that um, <laughs> that it's you. It's not us at all. It's you. And let them see the God in us. Um emanating so that way they're able to take action. And so, Lord, just bless everybody, Lord God, um, increase their faith, increase their prayer life, increase the resources, Lord God, and let favor pour upon them as we depart. We love you. We thank you. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. So always remember that no matter what you're going through or what you've been through, there's always more in you because God is in you. So I'm going to go ahead and end our broadcast until next time. So happy that you all were here.